Okay, so I'm going to start talking a little bit. So the first thing, of course, is that you need max. So SPAT5 now runs only in 64-bit mode. So that means that we need to make sure that your max opens in 64-bit mode. To do that, we can go to your Applications folder. Um, I'm going to work around this shadow up there. So go to your Applications folder and find Max, and do Command-I when, when you have that highlighted. Or you can do a right mouse button click and go to Get Info. And then you want to make sure that Open in 32-bit mode is not selected. Keep in mind that if you have already put Max in your dock, um, when it was set to open in 32-bit mode, it will still always open in 32-bit mode. So you have to remove it from your dock and add it again once you've deselected 32-bit mode to have it always open in 64-bit. So that was get info, command I, or uh, right, yeah, right click to get to get info or control click for single button mouses. Next thing is where to install the package. So when you install Max, Max will automatically create a folder in your documents folder called Max number. Um, and probably most people are on Max 7. Um, so in the Max 7 folder, there's another folder called Packages. And in there, that's where you put all of the uh, compressed files that were in the Packages folder. Um, some of the older folders that I gave you are um, a folder of HRTFs. That's the head-related transfer functions. Those are for binaural rendering, so pretty useful. Um, there's a, a collection of quite a number of them. Um, let's see where that is. So there's, there's a lot of these um, SOFA files. And those are um, different HRTFs that have been made of real people. And so um, some of them may work well for your body type. And you can maybe look through the, uh, you can basically just have to experiment with them and try to find one that, that works for you. And do they need to be someplace special? Yes, so in the HRTF folder, I'm just going to look over your shoulder, there's a readme. In, oh, um, and oh, actually, maybe I'll go to that website too. That's a good thing to do. OK, yeah, good. So we can use, I'll use the Google Drive to talk about it. Right, OK, so everything in the Packages folder needs to be unzipped. The, the, uh, looks like the ODOT is already unzipped. And then you mainly need you know, Windows or Mac. Um, and the Music and Computing is a, a course that I designed at CINMAT um, over the last couple of years and has some useful pedagogy materials that might be uh, useful for working with um, the ODOT library, which is a powerful um, library for OSC, handling of OSC messages. And the reason why that's going to be handy for you is that SPAT5 now is exclusively OSC, um, has an OSC interface. So that means that we can use ODOT, the power of the scripting language in ODOT, to do a lot of nice things with SPAT. And makes, it makes life easier, at least. Um, it's OK to put that parent folder into the package. No, thank you for asking. So the parent folder is just a note to say, these are things that go into your packages folder. Okay. But what you should do is take all of these folders and put them in the max packages folder, which is in your documents, max 7, packages. Um, Folder. Including that the, the compressed spat, spat.dmv? So all of those can be un, uh, uncompressed. Okay. And they should go into the packages folder uncompressed. Okay. Say again? 
Uh, when you install Max, it, it, it creates it. When you first run Max, it, it, it uh, starts the, um, it creates that folder. So that's in your users, so your home directory, documents, Max 7, packages. Um, OK, so the other things that are in here um, is some reading. So these are just some papers that I thought would be interesting. Um, this is actually from a class that I just did um, in Hamburg this past semester. Um, but since it's a very similar topic, I think it might be interesting for you guys. There's um, this paper here is one that um, Thibaut, Marcus, myself, and Natasha Barrett wrote for the Computer Music Journal a couple years ago, which I think could be interesting since you're learning a lot about the AirCam system and all of this. Um, so I included that. Um, this dissertation here is really good. This is um, Maria Anna Harley. This is an excellent dissertation. It's quite long, 400 something pages, but it's really good. But what I really like about this dissertation is that, here we go, table of contents, is that it, it talks about spatial music from starting from a very conceptual beginning of what, you know, what is space in sound and how, what is the sort of history of um, thinking about the spatial parameters in the context of sound. And I think this is very valuable to, to help figure out what the parameters are that are most poignant when you're working with, with spatial audio. Because it's, it's, of course, it's cognitive. It's, it's, you know, we're always, everything is connected to everything. So we're drawing on all these different aspects that, that um, will make your spatial scenes more effective. This um, Niels Peters uh, dissertation is also pretty good. It's a sort of, has some papers kind of broadly talking about um, many different types of um, uh, rendering and tools and things like that. Um, the other Maxlib, um, this is one, another uh, library for uh, spatial audio in Max. It's the um, uh, HIS. Uh, the HIRT, it's the Huddersfield Impulse Response Toolkit. Uh, but it also has some nice um, convolution um, objects and tools for uh, creating impulse responses. SPAT also has some of these, but um, this is a useful library also. Um, and then there's the SPAT4 user's manual. Um, at the time I put this together, I don't know if this has changed, but the, I believe that the SPAT5 package does not currently have the manual in it. Can anybody confirm that? There are release notes, but not the user manual. Yeah. So I am including the SPAT4 user manual here. Because even though it's for SPAT4 and not SPAT5, the main uh, architectural information in there is unchanged. So SPAT, SPAT 5 is new. There are many new things about SPAT 5, but the underlying structure of how the reverb model works, how the um, perceptual model works, is still the same. So it's based on the work of uh, Jean-Marc Jot in the 90s. Um, maybe Marc has talked about this already a little bit, no? Um, and but they, they did a, a lot of perceptual tests um, of, of trying to figure out what are the most important parameters to control to give a sense of um, different spatial criteria like um, um, position, like being able to tell where something is, also giving an impression of the space that the virtual source is in, um, things like envelopment, um, and and we'll we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Yes. Uh, the HIRT folder should that also be moved to packages? Thank you. That is the last package here. So in in the uh, HRTF folder, there's a README text, mm -hmm. and in here, um, it I copied this from Spat somewhere, and this explains where to put it. He was asking about HIRT. HIRT? Yeah. The, Sorry. The, 
That is similar sounding, but not the same. The reason why it's it's not it's it doesn't go in the packages folder. Okay. So it just needs to go into your max search path somewhere. Yeah, sorry. I misheard you. Okay, so now we can get started. Okay, so let's open up Max. Uh, you can do Command N or go to the File menu and say New Patcher. Um, so basically, in Max, there are things called objects, and you can create a new one by typing N, or you can drag one down from the menu up here. Now your window may look slightly different from me. Maybe I shouldn't be running. I'm running actually a beta version. Um, let me not do that, sorry. Okay, here we are. So you can create a new object by typing N, or you can drag one down from up here like that. Um, and these are objects that do, they're actually wrappers around some C code that has inputs and outputs. Um, the main, so they're mainly black boxes that do some sort of function. We send in information, we get out information. And what happens inside the box, we are able to control by the parameters that we send in from the outside, or sometimes by typing things into the box that um, dictate how the information is transformed from the input to the output. Where to start? So this is like a blank canvas, right? So I am, I have this blinking cursor. And my first instinct is to type O dot because that's what I do all the time. Should we start with that? Sure, why not? Okay. So here is an object that's called O dot compose. And so what I did with there was I made a new object and I just typed in o.compose. And hopefully if you have this installed in your packages folder, it should auto-complete for you. So o.compose, what does that do? I'm gonna now show you the most important, no, it's not, it's not opening for you. Uh, you may need to make sure that the synmat o.library is installed in your packages folder and maybe if you haven't restarted Max after doing that, you might need to do that. So sometimes you don't need to, sometimes you do, I'm not sure. Right, so now I'm gonna show you the most important keyboard shortcut in Max. You hold down the Alt key. Oh, actually the second most important thing. There's two modes to Max, uh, op locked and unlocked. So you hold Command down and E to go in between those things. Or you can hold Command and click on the background of the patch. So, but my favorite keyboard command is Alt and then clicking on the object. That brings up the help patch. This is by far the easiest way to solve most questions. <laughs> this is basically the manual. Okay, so <clears throat> o.compose. o.compose is a place for composing OSC bundles. So what's an OSC bundle? Well, first of all, what's an OSC message? An OSC message is an address and a value. The address is a name of the, of the value, basically. It's a, it's a name, it can be anything, but it has to start with a forward slash. So let's say, we'll say slash name, that will be our name. And then you do space colon, and now we're going to bind a value to the name name. I'm gonna say one. So this is a, a OSC message in o.compose. It's, the address is slash name, and the value is one, and the colon here is a notation that says this value is associated with this name. Now what's cool about, so that's, that's a o.message. But what's cool about ODOT is it allows you to have multiple messages. So let's say instead of a name, we have a, a uh, angle, which we will describe in terms of azimuth. So we'll have um, the azimuth in SPAT goes from, generally speaking, negative 180 to 180, where zero, zero is like if you're looking at the screen, 
the zero coordinate is, is in the middle, facing you, and uh, positive azimuth goes clockwise, and uh, negative azimuth goes counterclockwise. So zero is in front of you, positive is to your right, negative is to your left for azimuth. For elevation, zero is, is flat and goes positive up to 90 degrees and goes negative down to negative 90 degrees. Okay. Negative is to your right in azimuth and positive is to your left. Right. So let's say we want a point in space that is um, 45 degrees to the left. So we could say azimuth negative 45. And then uh, to have multiple values in a O dot compose, you put a comma after it. And then you can do an enter. And then we'll say the elevation, EL, will be zero, comma, and the distance, D-I-S-T, dist, will be one. And very importantly, at the end of um, bundles in O dot, we do not put a comma. So there's comma is separating the values in the list of things. So all of this data then, so we can have multiple messages, multiple OSC messages that are contained bundled together in one package. And what's really cool about that is that that means that all of these values are synchronized together. So that means you can have, imagine I have sensors all over my body and I have XYZ coordinates for every joint on my, my body. Um, I am a person who is here in time with all of this, all these values and wherever, whatever the values are at any given moment should all be contained together in one package that, that is then a, an object. That's kind of going back to what we were talking about yesterday with this kind of object-oriented audio. This is a kind of object-oriented uh, ness. <laughs> yes? So the order doesn't matter. You're saying they all come as a package. That's right. Wow. The order doesn't matter usually. Values and distance? Zero and so values, yeah, you can't have a negative distance, okay. generally. Okay. And that this, what's the unit? Measure? Well, that's, it's yeah. really, so far we haven't said anything about what, actually, yeah, I mean, I'm using sort of SPAT terminology. Um, in SPAT, things are in meters, usually. Rama, just a clarification. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, slash AZ is arbitrary. But it yeah. is not arbitrary for SPAT, which is it going to expect it? Is yes, yes. I've sort of sneakily, sneakily taught you three parameters that uh, SPAT enjoys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like the idea that left is positive, being left-handed. Actually, it's not. No, that's the opposite. Is it wrong? Right is positive? Yeah, just think about culture. <laughs> just think about the world and how, and how being left-handed it's is is the epitome is the epitome of stereotype being left actually it's to your left so it's negative wait that does not make sense um so right is positive left is negative it's always the case i can't explain it yeah i can't explain it in a good way yes also starting from zero going up just as far as it goes to 90 right because because um if you have more than 90, you are now have a, a lower elevation. Right, you're an azimuth at that point if you're going backwards. Right, if you're tilted this way, yeah, you're. Um, so it goes up to 90, and if you wanted to go beyond you, that, yeah, you have a different your, azimuth. Then that, then you, uh, so. Right. So, so, yeah, so I don't so know. Spat doesn't want 270. Spat wants minus 90. Okay, so I was gonna, I was going to clarify that Spat will try to adjust, if you give it a number outside of, um, like for azimuth, let's say you give it um, 360, I think it will give you zero. Okay. It'll it will kind of just make it zero. Okay. 
Um, you do negative, like, will negative uh, elevations be uh, below? Would, would, that, would that go down? Yeah, that? yeah, well, let's, let's try it. OK. So, um, so here we have azimuth, elevation, and distance. Let's say we want to, let's see, OK. I guess I have to, I can't, I can't not explain a little bit more about what this is going to, what this is. OK. So I'm saying that all these things are synchronized together, right? So this is a bundle. These values are, are collected into a bundle. And this is part of the ODOT library. And what's important to know is that if you send this ODOT bundle into a normal max message, this is a message. So I just went out of edit mode, and I'm going to click on this. It says full packet, 68 blah, blah, blah. blah. Um, and so what that's telling us is that this is a full packet, and this is a special. So the full packet is an identifier that identifies this as a full packet. And only objects that can deal with full packet messages will be able to parse it. So how did you make that? The, the, the message? The, yeah, yeah. Uh, just typed M. So this is a max message. Or you could create a new object. Or you can create a new object and type message. Or you can grab it from right here. Objects need to know how to parse this, this data. So what an OSC bundle is, is it's, it's bundling all of this information together into a concise, actually, this is a pointer in memory. And it's passing a pointer and saying, here's a place in the computer that has, that's storing my bundle for this split second when the thing comes out. Do not store this pointer and try to access it later. You may crash max because, um, the, the, this, this should be, I shouldn't have, well, no, this is important to tell you. I, some things are, you, are better left unknown, but uh, it's important to know that, that, um, that when things are, so Max is a flow, a data flow uh, language, right? So you have, um, there are the boxes and the data is coming through. And ODOT takes advantage of that um, because it's passing, uh, sorry, so when you, when something, when, when a, a, a sequence of events is triggered, when a sequence of processes is triggered at a one event, it goes down the line as far as it can, a depth all the way down, um, and it does all of that basically as fast as possible. So it does it all completely sequentially and uh, in a blocking manner. So it does not allow other things to happen before it's, it's con done all of its, its uh, operations. So that means that it's safe to pass an address of memory to another object, because we know that nobody else is going to, in max, is going to allocate uh, or, or try to um, access that memory. But this is a kind of a dangerous thing, because we are, uh, we are uh, showing we, you know, it, if you put a message here, um, you can store it in Max and try to access it later. Because here I put it into the right inlet of a message, which is a cold inlet, right? So that saves it, and that stores it after this whole sequence has happened. And so then um, we don't actually know if that memory is still valid or not. So I, this is all to say that there's a special f format here that we're using to achieve a, a powerful thing, which is combining a bunch of information in a very compact uh, container that we can then operate on to control SPAT, to control lots of things. We can use this bundle of information to describe um, the type of sound that we're making, where it should be in space, what kinds of processes we want to happen at this moment. but it comes with a little bit of danger. So do not store full packet messages, uh, period, basically. Don't, don't store them. <clears throat> because, because you, or rather, don't try to use a, a full packet message that came in when you weren't 
um, or do you know what I mean? Don't, don't store it and use it again later, basically, because it might crash. And I don't want you to crash. OK, that was a long explanation. My apologies. OK, so we're back. So let's now crack open a spat object. Let's say spat5 dot viewer. And if you double click the spat viewer, you should get a this window. And if you hover your mouse over it and use the mouse wheel or scroll up and down, you can zoom in and out, which is kind of cool. Say that again. You can use the scroll wheel or uh, two finger scrolling on a to do to scroll in and out. Um, but notice what do we have here? We have we have Spat's funny head with, I guess, headphones on or, I don't know, ears and a nose. The nose is to give you direct direction so you know that the head is facing front. And so we have two different panes here. We have one that is looking down from the top. So we have left, right, front, back. And then we have one that is I think it appears to be from behind, because we don't see the nose. So it must be left, right, and then top and down. And you can set, there are many um, options for spat viewer. Um, if you, everybody remember how to get to the help patch? Alt click, yeah. So here's the spat viewer help patch. <clears throat> and it has lots of tabs. Now, you'll notice that in SPAT, um, in the help patch, they're using regular um, messages for OSC addresses, um, just because sometimes that is easier. But um, I'm going to stick with ODOT, because SPAT does understand full packet messages. And SPAT also is using now full packets in a similar, in a mostly compatible way with, with ODOT. So I wanted to just pop this open. So one thing that we need to do, if we want to see, if we want to add a source here, we need to tell Spat Viewer that we, we have a source. So what we do is we can use o.compose and say source number space, I'm going to say one. So we're going to have one source. And if you put that into the spat viewer and send the message and then reopen the spat viewer, you'll see now we have a, a one here. And notice that as I, as I move the mouse, as I move the, this point around, look at the right hand side, it's always staying on the, on the um, zero plane in the Z axis. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So it's, um, uh, yeah. So source slash number is what's required to tell Spat Viewer how many sources to look for uh, or to create. You could also say 10. Then you have 10. You could also say 100. Then you have a lot of sources. What do you mean? Uh, just what, if I wanted to do the same thing, but from natively spat, not ODOT. Why would you want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> you could do that. Uh, okay. Now, the, so, you know, you might, and sometimes you'll see in spat, so let's say up here, um, let's say we take the same thing and put it in, in a regular message. In spat, they don't use the colons. So this would be the equivalent in, in just regular spat. But this is not an OSC bundle. And um, what the commas do here is they separate the values into, they, they're output sequentially. Mm -hmm. 
So if we were to do a print here, uh, maybe a bang also just for fun. And open up the window here. So if I click this, we get bang, azimuth 45, bang, elevation zero, bang, distance one. And if I do it with ODOT, we get bang, full packet. Exactly. So it's really all bundled together in a synchronized way. It's it's there. It's a uh, yeah. How much stuff can you put in a packet? Quite a bit. Is there a character limit? I don't think so. There might be. You want to try? I do. I there. I mean, there have there has been in the past. I think it's mostly. Let me know if you run into a problem. Okay. So you, we can also say, let's say we have, um, let's say we have one source, and let's let's be modest. Let's say we have eight speakers. So let's say speaker number eight, and Spat will, by default, it makes a um, e equally spaced circle of sources and speakers, which is kind of nice. And a lot of times it, you know, a lot of systems are set up like this. Sorry about that shadow there. Um, so that's pretty useful. And now let's try, OK. So now, you know, we started off with this azimuth elevation distance. And now we want to, we want to control Point 0.1 with these values. Now, um, in, in SPAT, we have to actually tell SPAT which source these values should be used by. Because, you know, SPAT uh, deals with, um, there's the listener, that's this person in the middle with the, with the ears and the nose. Um, it also deals with sources and speakers and regions. And all of these things can have azimuth elevation distance, x, y, z. Um, so SPAT can't do anything with it until we tell it who, who should do something with this. So let's, let's prepend to all of these addresses source 1. So source slash 1 slash az. And then I'm going to I just highlight slash source slash 1, copy, and just I'm just going to paste it down there to be quick. And now if I plug this into SPAT 5, I can see it, it went to the place. So now if I go to positive 45, it jumps over there. And if I do just make two of these, and let's say one is, oops, yeah, sure. Hours of fun just, just doing this. Mm -hmm. um, um, should I show you the fancy new, new stuff? All right. I'm going to, this might be a bad idea, but I think I'm going to show you. There's a new system that I made recently which I think should be in your folder, um, which is an object called, it's a new object called o dot, no, o dot GUI attach. And this is a method for <clears throat> um, synchronizing max MSP GUIs. Really? Oh, I know. You need to go to um, uh, options, file preferences, and then add the, OK, let's go to, so add a new path by clicking the plus sign, and then go to choose, and then go to uh, where the packages folder where you put ODOT, synmat ODOT. 
Looks like I have an old version here. Uh, oops. That's a, oh, I have, yeah. Mm, excuse me, I'm using, I mean, I'm using a development version, so. In the old out folder, there's a folder called dev. All right, um, and here it is. You need to add the dev folder to your search path. So these are objects that are in development, so we don't automatically include them into your search path so that if you're not, so basically if, I mean, I'm, sh I'm teach showing you guys this stuff, um, but it is in development, so that's slight warning. Um, so once you have the dev folder in your search path, you should be able to grab a o.gui attach, and the way this works is if you make a, uh, um, max GUI object, like a float, and then make a message and type in var name, and then, oh, geez, that is right in the wrong spot. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this is a, a regular um, message, and this is a float, so this is um, where you type F, and this one you type M. And with the var name, we can assign an address, an OSC address that we want to give to this float. So I'm going to call this um, source1az and attach it to the float. Click it. And now, if I put a o.compose under the o.gui attach it and attach the right inlet, it grabs that value. And it does do a little bit of magic, which is maybe frustrating. Um, but what it's doing is it's looking in the patch for, th for graphic objects that have um, var names and outputs their values as a synchronized bundle. And that's really useful um, if you're making interfaces. And right now, that's what I want to do. Oops, sorry. Um, and so if I now plug that GUI attach into the spat viewer. Um, it just, it, it, uh, it looks in the patch for things that have a, a, a name. And then it, it requires that it has an OSC address. And you have to bang that message. You have to click on it, yeah, in order for it to, to attach. But once you do that, it attaches. And then if we want to, let's say, add another one for elevation, OK. OK, Spat didn't like the elevation message for some reason. Yeah, I was getting that before. Let's see. In the help patch, let's figure out what messages we can send to Spat. So in the Spat viewer, there's a, an, another patch here that says Spat 5 positions. So if I double click on that, that goes to another patch. And here it talks about, like I was showing you before, about um, the azimuth and elevation coordinates. It's, and it describes all the different ways of, of act, or talking to spat. Um, and it looks like the elevation is actually not L, but elev. Yeah. It's not the only way, no. Okay. Way. It's just, um, it's my preferred way right now. Gotcha. You can also use o.pack. So if I did o.pack slash source one dist, and then put a float on that, that does the same thing. But what I like about o.gui attach, and the reason why I made that is that it, it synchronizes the graphic objects all together. So if you use pack, it's a little bit more deterministic feeling. The GUI 
attach is also deterministic. It's, it's outputting, every, but it outputs everything on when it changes. Maybe you don't always want that, but it's a convenient way for, for working. Um, Wait, are you saying so if I, when you say that it outputs everything when changing, so if I change just the elevation, it also updates whatever the current state of like azimuth or anything? Exactly. So it always sends out everything. So in this, it's state aware. Sort of it's state aware. Yeah, so it's, it's always sending everything. So it's the state of your GUI objects. And that's like 99% of errors in Max have to do with, with state problems. And so that, this is all kind of a way to try to avoid those problems. And PAC does not work with that. PAC just sends what is. PAC is going to still rely on, on updating. Of course, I mean, they all, they all have, there's potential problems everywhere. But. Um, OK, so now if we go back to our SPAT viewer and if I, oops, if I increase now the elevation with my float number, I can see that it's, it's doing it now. Oh, and it's still going right up into that shadow. Sorry about that. <laughs> Something just very satisfying about graphic interaction. I don't know what it is. So, so far we're just making pictures, right? Um, and this is another thing that kind of like what I was saying yesterday, I feel like, I feel like usually when you're, when you're designing for, sorry, when you are composing or designing or whatever you, terminology you use, when you are developing ideas that will combine senses or combine tools, Sometimes it ends up forcing us to think about things in kind of compartmentalized ways. Um, and so, you know, you may spend a lot of time looking at something like Spat Viewer, where it's, it's um, you know, we see the dot and we have some idea about this means that there's a sound coming from the dot. But we, doesn't, we don't know what that sound is, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying that I have a solution for that problem, but, but here we are, we're, we're working on OSC for controlling the visualization. Sometimes it's easy to lose sight of, of what the, the goal of what you're doing is. And I certainly don't know what my goal is right now, but... Um, <laughs> But that's just the exact point is like, oh, yeah, we're spending all this time doing them. Like, oh, yeah, maybe we should like plug it into spat spat. But like when you're working, it's good to keep in mind like you're the big picture. Yeah, a question over there? Yeah, so I have two values set up. I, I think the way <laughs> And when I change one, it changes in the spat viewer. And when I change the other, the, the dot in the spat viewer like snaps. Oh, look at that. Does that happen for you too? Yeah, what is going on with that? Like if you now change the track. Whoa. Yeah. Shit. Let's try Asim. Maybe, maybe. All right, Asim works better. Okay. I think it said something in the help file about Yeah, Asim and. AZ have two different properties. One retains the value of the other. Oh, okay. Probably well, yeah, in this case, yeah, use as a, if you, if you want to, wow, that's so, I can't even start with, with my complaints about that one. <laughs> Thank you. So Azim has a different behavior than AZ. Um, okay. Say again? I think EL doesn't even work. Okay, let's look at the output of this. So I think, I believe that SPAT is going to, yeah, okay. So SPAT has a funny, I, I, 
don't like this about Spat, but Spat has is now, I mean, six, six years after I asked him to do it, <laughs> Spat finally is using OSC for everything. So because Tebow wants to kind of make it a little bit easier in, for Max, um, when there's only one message coming out of Spat, it will use a non-full packet. But if there are multiple messages coming out, it sends a full packet. So if I bang the Spat viewer, it's sending out all of the data. So if we look at the output of Spat viewer and we bang it, we get a list of speaker coordinates and the list of um, sources. Now, notice that the format here is a little bit different than what we were sending in. So source uh, AED stands for azimuth elevation distance. What's the best thing to do? I don't know. OK, so another way to do this is to just type in a list. So here we can say source one AED colon. And then to make a list in O dot, you use the brackets, single square brackets. So we can say AED. And here we'll say um, negative 45, comma, 0, comma, 1. So that is a source that is uh, negative 45 degrees to the left at 0 elevation and 1 meter away. And I'm going to say. Are spaces important inside the brackets? Spaces, no. No. But the commas are important. Those separate the values. And there's no comma at the end. Source 1 XYZ is the same. So we could say a source that is, uh, let's say, one meter to the left, uh, zero meters, let's say, one meter forward, and zero meters high. And if I click on that, we can see that it converts it to azimuth elevation distance when it sends it out. And you can set also, if you want to change what format the SPAT outputs, um, you can send it, I believe, a format message. So here I'm using, I'm, I'm kind of fluid, fluidly moving between here I'm, I'm using a regular max message, just because sometimes that's easier. So now if I send in an AED message, it outputs an XYZ value. Um, and if you go into the SPAT viewer and you move the source around, you can see that it's outputting the, the values into max as well. Um, OK, so let's see. OK, so we better make, get you having some sound before we run out of time. OK, so usually, so we're here, we're talking about control mainly. So I'm kind of starting with just getting a sense of, of how we're going to build up some sophisticated control uh, approaches for working with SPAT. But of course, no matter what your control method is, we still need to um, control something, right? So the thing we'll start with is a panning. So we'll do spat5 pan tilde. And let's go to the help patch for that. And we can see here that in the help patch, there are um, attributes that begin with the at sign. I don't know if you can read that up there. Let's zoom in a little bit. So these are attributes that begin with the at sign. And we say, so it says spat5.pan tilde space at inputs space 2 space at outputs space 6. So these are, um, in spat5, most of the attributes have been removed. Uh, whereas in SPAT4, 
there was uh, very often many, many attributes that we could add to the objects. In SPAT5, that, that functionality has been removed in favor of um, OSC initialization. So generally, things that are not required uh, attributes, like here, we need to tell SPAT how many input inlets to make in the object and how many output outlets to make. So that's actually required information for that, for SPAT to even make the object. But if they aren't required, um, they are now not included as an attribute. And also, previously, uh, many objects in SPAT4 um, had an attribute at num inputs and num outputs, and now it is uh, just at inputs and at outputs. I should also add that in the extras folder, there is a SPAT5 overview. And I encourage everybody to read this over. Um, and in the tutorial, so there's a bunch of tabs up here. And in the tutorials tabs, tutos, hang on, is that, is that where I'm looking? Is it what's new? Sorry, Yo, migrating, there? migrating. What? Hmm? And how did you get to that window? So I went to extras. Ah. And then there's something called SPAT5 overview. Um, and in the tutorials, there is migrating from SPAT4. And so there's a bunch of tutorials here about um, the differences between the SPAT4 and SPAT5. So I definitely encourage everybody to, to look at that. Um, but let's continue with, with um, our first example. Um, and so back down here. So let's say, so here in our, our uh, example, we have one source and eight speakers. So let's say for the SPAT pan, we'll say at inputs one and outputs eight. And then we connect the SPAT five viewer to the inlet of SPAT pan. And so remember with SPAT five viewer, we, when we double click it, it opens up the GUI window. SPAT, SPAT viewer, SPAT five viewer is a, is actually a GUI, a graphic user interface object that pop, is a pop-up window. In SPAT5, there are now um, windows that pop up when you double click on the objects that show you the state of the, of the object. So you, here we see a, what, uh, you know, almost looks like an OSC bundle, uh, which it kind of is, Basi yeah, basically is. Um, and it shows you all the different parameters that are currently set uh, in the object. Um, we can see here it says speaker number eight. Um, and it has a default uh, azimuth elevation distance value, number of sources one. And here we can see that the panning type is angular. So that's the default panning method for, for SPAT. And if we want to change that, we can send the same uh, address message here, OSC message, to SPAT. So let's say in our, so this is, this, I'm going to delete, I'm not going to delete them, I'm just going to move them over here. So this, just clean up a little bit. This OSC o.compose object, is our initialization, initialization bundle. And so here we are sending initialization values to the object. Just remembering that this may not work exactly the way I want it to. So spat pan is, we have to send, at the moment, we have to send a different we can't pass the bundle. It, spat, the SPAT objects don't have a delegation outlet like many o, uh, OSC objects have a delegation um, object outlet. Um, most SPAT5 objects, they receive messages that they understand, and then they complain if you send them a, a message that you, they don't understand. So for instance, if we say... Sorry, Mama, what's a delegation outlet? Oh, I'm sorry. 
Thank you for asking. A delegation outlet is, let's say you have o.root, and you say foo, and you send something in, the write outlet sends out things that, doesn't, that do not match foo. So delegation in OSC is a term for when you, you pass to someone else the things that you don't want to, you are not working <coughs> with. <clears throat> so um, uh, in this case, we can't send in panning type to spat viewer and have it passed down to spat pan. We have to make a separate um, initialization bundle for spat pan. So what we need to do here is say panning type. Is that what it was? So if we double click on spat pan, yes. So slash panning, slash type, and then the name of a panning type. If we go to the spat5 help patch, <coughs> and up here on, on the rightmost tab, there's, oh, can you read that? At the rightmost tab, there's a question mark. If you click on the question mark, you can get to open reference. I think there's actually a way to get there from the main page. But if you go to the open reference, it, it brings us to a reference page once it loads. And aha, for de detailed information, that's nice. For detailed description of supported panning methods, see the panning type message in the reference page. OK, let's do it. OK. so. Possible values. So the, these are all of the different panning methods that SPAT gives you, which is quite a number of them, even including WFS. Woo, and null. Wow, what's that? <laughs> but WFS, cool. Um, so there are many, many useful things here. And that's one of the great things about SPAT is that it's, um, you, can, you can set the panning type while still maintaining the same architecture of your, of your patch. So you can quickly switch the method that you're using without needing a new object. And could you have two pan objects with different types? Two different, yeah. You can't have. Per source, yeah. I think at the moment, each uh, spat five pan object can only have one panning type. But you can have multiple spat pan objects. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So panning type. And then we set one of these values. So let's start with just putting um, a pretty good one is called VBAP. That is vector-based amplitude panning, which comes in 2D and 3D flavors. And let's use the 2D flavor. And so now if we send that um, OSC message to spat pan, and now we double click on spat pan again, we can see that <clears throat> now the panning type is set to VBAP 2D, whereas before it was set to Angular. Yes? Is there any reason to send the source and speaker number to the viewer? Oh, I guess you have to do it. I guess I'm confused on like, how do we know when to send the spat pan and when to send to the viewer? Um, <clears throat> each object potentially has different um, different parameters that it's interested in, different attributes of the, yeah, I guess it's an attribute. Um, so the viewer doesn't actually do panning. The viewer, what the viewer is doing is it's giving you a view of sources, speakers, and the listener position. So it's not controller. Kind of a controller. It can use it as a controller. Or it's a, oh, like a model view control? Uh, can you click on a source and move it around? In the viewer? Well, yeah, but then will that also affect the output? Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so spat viewer, that's what, so that's what we're doing here. So spat viewer, if you remember, um, if you look, out the, look at the output of spat viewer, it's sending out the, the OSC message 
source one x, y, z as I move this point around. And spat pan takes that value of the source position and will use it to do its panning. So let's, let's see that in action. So I'm not hooked up to any speakers right now, which is totally fine, because this is just a first steps to make sure the system's working. So I'm just going to send noise in to spat pan. And now I'm going to, let's see, I'll do, um, I'm going to use live gain at channels 8. That makes a live gain object with eight channels. And let's clean up a little bit. Mm. Sometimes it's hard to clean up. Uh, all right, I'm just going to delete those for now. All right, so that was there. This is here. OK. OK, now it's only eight channels, so I can do that with my hand. It's not. You want to do that? Okay, okay, okay. That's true. It's it's definitely more it's more satisfying for sure. Okay. So um, so what you do is you make a new object, and you could type in spat five dot multi dot connect, and then it takes an argument which is the number of channels that you want to connect. So usually, if you're working. Um, with a given number of speakers, with a given, if you're working in ambisonics, usually you'll have a certain number of coefficients. So you're usually working with the same number of channels. Um, and so you just set it for that number. So in this case, it's eight, because so we have eight outputs. And then you just highlight both objects that you want to connect, and then type exclamation mark. Boom. Yeah. The exclamation mark just makes it so much more fun, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I can tell you, I, I, well, should I tell you? Yeah. I'm, yeah, so this has to be in the patch. OK, so finally, we can turn on the DSP. Ready? One, two, three. OK. That's pretty exciting, huh? OK, so now let's go to Spat Viewer. And let's check out what's going on. OK, so the source is right next to 8, right? But it's kind of near 1, too. And if you look at the channels coming out, you can see that channel 1 is coming out a little bit lower. And channel 8 is at, looks like, pretty much 0 dB. If I move that to channel 1, now, if I put it right on channel 1, it's, OK, it's slightly to the, what if I zoom? Anyway, so with VBAP, it uses two channels for every source position. VBAP 2D, excuse me. In VBAP 2D, it picks the two closest speakers and pans between those two. Um, there's also um, a spread value. Just double checking. I'm actually not sure what divergence means. That's interesting. Uh, but let's, let's, so it says source one spread omni is currently set to zero. Let's try, let's try setting source one spread omni. What's the best way to do this? Um, let's use. Exactly. 
exactly. That's what. That's my conflict now. Is I. I want, I want it to be, I wish that SPAT had delegation built in so that you could just send the bundle through and then each object would just take the thing that it cared about and pass it on to the next one. So I've asked them to do that and so far they're not convinced that it's a good idea, but obviously is a good idea. So um, maybe someday that will happen. But for now, we have to just send the messages that each object wants separately. So what were we doing? Oh yeah, so let's say source one spread omni. I just created a o.pack object. I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit. Hopefully you can still read that. And I'm going to put a float there. I'm showing you different ways to do the same different things. Um, so what I'm hoping to do is adjust this value right here. Source one spread omni. I'm curious how that's going to affect the output of the of the spat pan. Let's see. Aha. Uh -huh. So the more omnidirectional the source is, the more channels it comes out of. Someday we'll plug in speakers and actually hear what this sounds like. Question about speakers. At what point? You didn't put any speaker positions in. Right. Can you show us? Yes. Yeah, let's do that. And then I think um, we might, after that, we might need to wrap up for today. Because it just defaults to. Yeah, so it defaults. So, like we were talking about before, when you put in speaker number, it defaults to a, a ring of equally spaced. But usually you want to. Specify. So let's say we have, um, okay, we can do eight speakers. And now let's, let's notate each um, speaker position separately. So let's say speak, oops, slash speaker one slash, let's say just XY because we're dealing with a 2D space. Could also do azimuth elevation, but let's say we have um, eight speakers in a in a box. Let's see if we can do that mentally. So for each speaker, we're going to need two coordinates. So let's say speaker one is at. How about you guys shout out um, speaker coordinates, and I type them in. <laughs> okay. So speaker one, where is it? Minus one one. Minus one one. I mean, well, okay, so I, that's a question I had earlier. It, it said A, B, and it had degrees for the for the A and the E, and then D was listed as one. Mm -hmm. And I and I and, and I can't quite figure out what the unit is. In it. It's I think it's it's generally speaking meters, because in some cases it will calculate, for instance, the delay that it takes for a source to get to to you. So you calculate the delay and for instance, potentially the gain attenuation as a sound moves through the air, it's losing energy, it's being absorbed by the air, and it's, um, it's getting quieter as it, and having a delay as it comes towards you. So uh, SPAT will often calculate these things for you. And so for that reason, the distance model is in meters. Is, I mean, it's important to know that the distance model is in meters. OK. So. Yeah, so this is a very small array because the speaker is only one meter from you, but that's cool. So, okay, so where's speaker two? Can somebody tell me? How about zero one? Plus one? All right, I guess I can do it. Uh, negative one, uh, zero. Uh, negative one, negative one. Zero, negative one. Uh, neg Wait, I messed up something there. Uh, help! Oh, positive, positive, right? Because we're going. I'm, I want to go around from start, starting over there. Zero, one, 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 zero. Negative one. Negative one. Oh, uh, wait. I think. Hang on. Now I'm. Now I'm involved. Trying to get this. Okay, zero. 
Now this is negative one and y is zero, okay. So now let's see what happens. So I click on that, click, and now we have a, a square. Right, so this is how you would set your, your speaker setup. This is one way of, of several to do that. You can also, yeah, see the SPAT viewer um, help patch for more information or can ask you, uh, you can ask me later. Um, if there's a shortcut for putting it back to the normal ring after, like if you've, you're experimenting, you just want it to go back, is there a shortcut for that? Uh, well, the default yeah. is just, if you just send in, yeah, the two, yeah. I think the that's two. a good question. If I just send in, if I reset the number of speakers, does it, it nope. Okay, so it, it, you have to actually delete the object and reset it to do that. Um, or you can, you know, if you, if you want to experiment, you can also just make a new copy of your speaker setup. And, and don't delete the old one, and then you can switch back and forth. I think that just about wraps up for today. Um, what I would suggest that everybody does is look at the SPAT 5 overview, which is in the extras folder. So extras, SPAT 5 overview. It's also just a patch, <laughs> correct? Hmm? It's also just a patch that you could find in there. Yeah, find yes, so yes, right, yep. And um, there's uh, tutorials. There's a bunch of tutorials in here that are um, worth looking at. And um, once you have, also if you have the music and computing installed, um, there's a bunch of tutorials here in the music and computing folder. Um, that goes from basically the beginning of, of Max. Here's Max Matthews, um, who is the namesake of Max. And quickly has an overview of digital audio, an overview of ODOT, um, there's a lot of stuff in there. Um, one thing that I hope to get to soon is there's an object um, in the music and computing folder called synmat o.io.mouse. And if you go to the help patch for that and move your mouse around, you can see that it's sending out tons of data about the mouse. And this is, could be interesting. Uh, maybe for tomorrow, we'll do an experiment with using the mouse to control spat and then um, make some uh, algorithmic process that uses the spat, or uses the mouse movement to control some perceptual parameters uh, in spat. So hopefully everybody was able to get spat up and running and moving a source around and seeing the uh, panning um, process in beginning action, beginning stages. Any questions before we wrap up? Uh, yes. Uh, when I try to move the distance parameter mm -hmm. uh, inside the patch, uh, the volume in the light gain doesn't change. So when, when I change ah. the, uh, yes. in the graphic user interface, it does, but when I do it in the Right. Screen. OK, yeah, excellent. So did everybody hear that question? So if you look at the SPAT viewer, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Notice that, notice that as I move the source away from the listener, what's happening to the, to the gains? Nothing. Right. Because SPAT pan is only panning. It is not a uh, perceptual model of distance or space. It is strictly panning. So it's distance agnostic. It, it does not use distance information. And none of the, uh, in the, in the 
panning type, panning flash type, or specifically VBAB? Type? No, so, um, so this is, I think, an important, um, an important difference between uh, a panning system, a, a purely panning system, and something that actually uh, uses the, re the uh, kind of physics of sound, of acoustics, to give a realistic scene of, um, well, realistic, it gives a, gives a more perceptually, re yeah, perceptually realistic scene, uh, audio scene, based on spatial position. So if something is further away in the real world, it takes time for sound to move across space, and it loses energy, and it um, has radiation and patterns, um, and all that kind of thing. And and so, there are that is a large part of what SPAT does, but this is a purely panning object. So this object is is the kind of core block for um, for for panning. <laughs> It's the panning object, but then it takes more than panning to create a, a realistic scene. Right. Uh, so but there's yeah. a SPAT 5 opera, right? Right, so SPAT opera, and actually maybe that's the thing to end with here today, is actually SPAT 5 dot SPAT tilde yeah. is probably the quintessential do everything SPAT object. So SPAT, SPAT, mm -hmm. and if you go to the Spat, spat object. Le spatulature. Um, this is probably good homework for everybody, is go to the spat, spat help patch and look at that. And also, most importantly, spat five opera over here on the right-hand side of the screen right here. It's so tiny, you might not even see it but it's probably the most important object in SPAT. And this is the graphic interface for SPAT SPAT. So please, for your homework, uh, <laughs> for tomorrow I'd like everyone to read the, the manual, SPAT, the SPAT manual, uh, <laughs> look at the help patches for SPAT SPAT, and the help patch for SPAT Opera. Maybe by the end of the week, we could do an experiment where um, I set up some kind of server on my computer and you guys flood me with the OSC messages and um, send uh, to control sounds. Let's, let's try that. Let's make that a goal for, by the end of the day Friday, we sh you should all have sent an OSC message over a network to move a sound around. Cool? Okay, let's do that.